Hello guys, welcome to the second half of our course, which we plan to finish it now. Uh, we were talking, we were talking about open source development, and I just gave you some examples about the popularity of this kind of approach in software world and how it impacts us. So we're going to take it onward. What is open source development? Open source development means that you're going to develop the software in a way that it will not specifically charge you to uh, pay uh, so it will be developer friendly but more importantly it will actually uh, uh, be encouraging volunteers to uh, be invited and be participated in the software uh, development process the idea behind this uh, is basically depend on the Free Software Foundation, which was found two years and years ago, and it is defending that anyone should be available to examine and modify the code as they wish. Okay. Now, the way that so open software development uh, is done has changed ever since that. So that was the foundation of it. Now we have different kind of licenses under software development so there isn't one way of doing it there are many different ways but the idea of using the uh, basically uh, attracting a population of volunteer developers uh, is basically is the same for open source developments now how these volunteers contribute to software development changes according to the license so it's not always they are contributing to the development of software, but they can contribute to making it more popular, making available or typing libraries that does a specific thing on the top of it so that people can use it or they can you know, develop a new user interface library or an image processing library and so forth on the software and make it more available to the public. So all you have to do is to import this library and use it. The most widely known open source product that is available today is the Linux operating system. I'm sure you have all uh, taken uh, operating systems course from the Rimoja, and he's a very big fan of the Linux platform. He uses Linux in every single machine of his. And basically, uh, this is a very good operating system if you want to support distributed systems or as a client server uh, uh, traffic uh, on and it is also a very good platform to develop android applications as far as i know uh, the android studio works really fast on the linux much faster than actually windows other important open source products are java which is losing its popularity nowadays but still popular the web servers, the MySQL database management, and we can also put uh, Python on this list because it's become very, very popular in the last years. You can see that IDEs such as Android Studio, Visual Studio actually became the community edition, became an open source system, GitHub clients, or even uh, frameworks or content management systems such as WordPress. Laravel has become very popular and successful open source systems. This is rather a business model. It's not only, you know, making it available to the public, but it is also a business model. So it's just encouraging more and more uh, people to join into coding and supporting each other. And only until to a certain uh, profit they reach, then they have to pay for the license. More and more product companies are using an open source approach to development and which they increase their popularity. Like as I told you in the previous uh, video, Microsoft has been, you know, bashed all these years and because of their agenda, because of their not being open source model development and suddenly they said, we're going to drop down this, we're going to go into a different path and now they are being loud in the software world. There is the, you know, if you go 15 years ago, people will say, oh, I, I don't really like C-sharp, Java is the best. And now 
it's became the opposite. People support C sharp much more than Java because of how you know their strategy has changed. And as I said, it's, it's more than inviting people to work with you or on your uh, approach, but rather it is a business model. The business model relies on not selling the software, but selling the support for that product. So it's just like uh, there are certain things that you can do with the Visual Studio, with the Community Edition, if you want to use it at a personal level. But then it goes uh, into a much different direction uh, when uh, you develop the software to a certain extent. You can now use it for other purposes. I know many people, for example, using the Unity game engine to do the visual stuff, but they actually use Visual Studio for the C sharp part. They never use the uh, the uh, integrated development environment in the Unity because they find Visual Studio much more friendly. Yes, Daniel, you have a question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I wanted to ask you uh, if something is open source and uh, uh, the developer wants to contribute and make a change to it, uh, does it uh, fall to the owners of the software to determine if those changes should be added or not? And I mean, how do they make these decisions you know, based on that? Because a lot of people would have ideas, but how do they choose which ones they want to add to this? You need to look at the open source license of which kind of license that they use for the open source development. There are a couple of different licenses under open source development, such as the generic public license, lesser generic, the Berkeley standard distribution license, which we're going to see in a while. And each license has its own restrictions. So it means that if you, for example, using the generic public license, then you must make the software open source, whatever is the case, whether it is profitable or not, and so forth. Another license can basically tell you that up to a certain point, you can use whatever is available there. But once you have done this threshold of profit, then you must make sure to get another license, a more commercial one or something like this. So uh, if you are looking not into getting trouble with certain software that you use and see how you can schedule your business model, it's always nice to look at under which open source development license they fall so that you wouldn't breach a law or, or whatever agreement you have come to the, them with when you install the software by clicking the FD button, all right? So um, that depends on the open source development license the software has. And like I said, there are different kinds of license. If it is a generic public license, basically uh, when you develop a software using the open source platform, you must also make sure that whatever code you type is also open source. Okay, that's the regulation. Or otherwise, you might get into some trouble in a country and they might sue you if you take too much attention, uh, if you earn mm, a lot of profit from it, you know, because uh, you didn't share your profit with others. Basically, it's like stealing tax. Uh, that's how they see it. Okay, but as I said, uh, it all depends on which license you are under. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah, good. So a fundamental principle of open source development is that source code should be free and available. But this does not mean that anyone can do as they wish when they do the coding. The developer of the code, either a company or an individual, still owns the code. They can place restrictions on how it is used and they can legally bind you to certain conditions. Okay, just as then you ask. Some open source developers believe that if an open source component is used to develop a new system, then the new system should also be open source. But like I said, this is not always the case. 
there are different licenses that you can obtain and you can actually uh, look into to get that license so that your software doesn't have to be open source. Others are willing to allow their code to be used without these restrictions, but they might not be, you know, uh, open to share everything. There are different kind of licenses, as I told you. Some of these are listed in here, the most common ones that I've come across. Uh, I put them into three different categories in here, the generic public license, the lesser general public license, and the Berkeley standard one. Uh, the general public license is that uh, when you use the open source software that is licensed under this umbrella, then you must make the software open source. So it's like if you're gonna use, let's say a specific open source language, whatever you define must be open source as well. That is the generic public license. The less general one is the variant of the GPL, but when you write the components that link to the open source without having to publish the source of these components. So you make it available to be used for free, but you don't share the source code. And finally, the Berkeley standard is a non uh, reciprocal license, which means that you are not obligated to do any changes or modifications made to the open source. You can include the code in the systems that are sold. So, like I said, it depends on the kind of license that you uh, need to uh, perhaps uh, look into. And uh, these are not the only open open source license that are available there. There are others as well, like combination of the two or perhaps more. So if you're going to use an open source uh, platform, it is always uh, good to get the right license so that you don't get into trouble. Uh, that's, I think, it's very important. Like you're not going to get into trouble just because uh, a thousand people are accessing to your software or whatsoever, but if you take too much attention using this open source license and suddenly develop a website or whatsoever, the thousands of people access and you earn, earn huge profit and these companies will then can backtrack you and look into like how you use that and whether or not you registered your license and so forth. So it's always a nice idea as your business grows to keep an eye so that these people will not come and rob you from your profit. Now this is an org chart, maybe I should update this, but uh, the Google's uh, 2017 uh, web crawler statistics, which is like th almost three years ago, uh, based on 31 million open source projects shows you that over 48 percentage of the results under open source license for, fall into the general public license. And the second part is the lesser general public license. Uh, so overall we can say that almost 70% 70, 70 to 75 percent falls under these popular licenses and as you can see around uh, 15 percentage is the very standard distribution license so uh, I really suggest you to go for open source development uh, particularly if you want to establish a business or many companies do the same anyway so you will see very few companies today that are not supporting open source development. So if you get a full stack development or, or server side developer or back end front end developer positions, most probably you will work with an open source development platform because companies, as I said, they have trying to reduce the uh, cost for the development as much as they can. Software design and implementation are interrelated activities. So the level of detail in design depends on the type of system and sometimes these activities are actually concurrently done. Only in the plan-driven development they are 
separated, but even then, one follows the other, so it's just an, basically a design is an abstract representation followed by the implementation where you fill these abstract details. Developing software, when you develop the software, you should always consider the possibility of reusing existing software. This is basically telling the developers that if there is some kind of library out there doing a specific job, you don't need to 100% know it. For example, if you are developing a mask for an Instagram, whatever, uh, augmented reality extension, you don't need to understand how the image processing is done as long as you can dominate it. So developers uh, in the industry are not expected to understand full grasp of every single code or to write everything from scratch as long as they can do the stuff and you know have a control on it it's fine to reuse the models this does not mean that you have to do you know plagiarism or copy paste or because you know you need to think of the integrity of software company but uh, you can use an open source license an open library and just you know reference that person who developed it and get away with these issues it's quite uh, clearly configuration management is the process of managing changes to an evolving software system it is essential when a team of people are cooperating to develop uh, software uh, this is the same as using you know your uh, ideas with some extensions so that they can uh, help you out to work together. You actually did an assignment on this, you know, uh, and the pandemic situation actually helped us in this course because physically you were not in a position to communicate with one another. So you need to establish a management system to basically uh, develop and evolve the system, which what you did in your assignments. Finally, uh, open source development involves making the source code of a system publicly available. This means that many people can propose changes and improvements to the software. We can uh, see that open source development has taken up its uh, popularity in, in the recent years particularly. And uh, there are very few uh, licensed developing tools nowadays. So th and the idea here is to encourage users, encourage developers, especially the small indie developers, to be part of the community until they come to a certain uh, point that they make profit and then they can share their profit with the big organizations and companies because Basically, uh, without these open source practices, only the big giant cooperative industries will produce the software, not the small developers. And because of their greed and uh, their bureaucracy, we would probably pay a lot of money. We will end up paying a lot of money to these corporations, these giant uh, cooperative businesses. And I really support open source development because uh, it's basically fundamentally needed uh, in terms of encouraging more and more uh, junior level programmers like you into the business. And this is the end of my course. We reached to the end right now and we covered quite a lot of subject in this course, eight chapters. I think that's enough. We could have done more, but I said, I think that's enough for you for this term. Uh, and I'm just going to discuss now the final exam procedure with you. Uh, and if you have any questions, I will accept your questions. So in your final exam, you will have uh, 20 multiple choice questions and all the chapters since chapter one will be included. So all everything we covered in the course, every exercise we did, even the material you've seen in the project will be included to the final exam. I will not ask you to memorize anything and you shouldn't anyway, but the questions will be very logical, uh, a definition perhaps, or an example, which you can always backtrack from the choices that will be given to you in the multiple choice part. An important structure of the exam that I like to mention is that all questions will be sequential. This means that once you have answered the question, 
once you have seen a question, you won't be able to turn back, okay? This is utterly important to underline. So I'm gonna underline it five times, 15 times, 100 times, so that don't come and tell me in the future again. All questions in the exam will be sequential, which means once you have seen the question, you must answer it. You, we will not have the option to skip the question and turn back again to answer it. This is a decision I come across with my departments, with my colleagues. It's not a decision I took by myself. It is a decision we come across after doing several exams uh, online with other courses because uh, of how the structure of the exam is being done right now. We have no absolute control in a classroom environment. Right now, all of you can access the all source materials. You can communicate to each other in the exam. I have no control over this. You can talk or browse the internet. You can look at the search materials. So this is why the restrictions we put into the exam, such as the time limit, and the sequential style of the questions is needed and absolutely crucial to make sure to reduce the, you know, to minimize the number of people who cheat in the exams, okay? The exam time will be 30 or 35 minutes for 20 questions, which will be enough to answer the questions, but not enough for those who want to talk to other people, come up to an agreement with his or her friend to answer the same question. Each person will see different questions as well. So for example, Daniel's first question is not gonna be the same as Fatih's first question. And like Hamza's first question or second question is not gonna be the same as James. This means that every single person will have a different order of questions. And that is why once you are exposed to the questions, you must answer it because it will only take you minutes to discover your first question is matching with Fatih's, let's say, question seven, and then you can come across the same answer and then move on. If I allow navigation in the exam, I'm sure that is like the same as encouraging people to cheat, which is why all questions will be sequential and I'm not gonna change my mind about this. So do not even try to discuss it with me, okay? So overall, on the date that mentioned on SIS, you will take the exam. You will have 20 questions, 30 to 35 minutes to finish the exam. And all questions will be multiple choice. Yes, Ahmed, you have a question? Yes, sir. I want to ask you about like the, the second project, about the responsibility. Do do we need to do we need to, to write just the responsibility for the second project or for all the, all the things that we did this semester about the two project? You can upload an individual appraisal section if you want. I can actually uh, unlock it right now after the course. I'll uh, unlock it. In that part, you can uh, list your uh, responsibilities and also your peers. So if you see uh, the upload project section, this is where you upload it. I will unlock the individual appraisal part upload as well and put it under there so you can basically upload your individual appraisal. The individual appraisal is basically discussing your role in the group, uh, giving marks to your peers, whether they worked or not, okay? And also evaluating your teamwork. And it is something that I'm not gonna share with others. It is something that I'll keep to myself. So even if you negatively comment on people or let's say that your team did not work properly and you ended up doing the whole work, you can share this with me in the individual appraisal part and I'm not gonna share it with your colleagues, okay? That is something that I come across with this teamwork kind of stuff because I know that in every group there's one guy who does most of the job and the other is just being lazy. Yes, questions? What I meant is, like, uh, should we write the responsibility even for the first project or not? 
because it's complete to each other, that's why. Yes, you can write it down in the individual appraisal part. So there will be okay. a section that you will basically upload the individual appraisal, which will inscribe your own responsibilities. You will also evaluate your team members, mark their work with a description. So if your team member is Patti, you will give him, for example, 80, 80 over 100 and explain why you did this, okay? Okay, okay, thank you very much. Limit, which is gonna be given to you and the limit will be, of course, 10 megabytes. All right, I will up, I'll unlock this section. It's already ready, as you can see. I just didn't unlock it. I have to unlock this so that you can upload it. And after the course, I will unlock it, all right? Okay, Any sir, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Tara, you have a question? Uh, yes, doctor, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, I don't have any question uh, related to this lecture. Furthermore, uh, as it is a last lecture you are take related to this course, uh, I'd like to tell you thank you very much. As myself, I can benefit in your knowledge and in your lectures a lot in all courses that I took it with you. And uh, during uh, this online course, thank you very much to provide for us uh, Zoom uh, as a tool to present uh, the lectures. Uh, the quality of the Zoom is more better than the blue button. And it is uh, for us more comfortable during the lecture time. Really, as a student, I appreciate your effort to provide for your for students the best. And uh, as I have an experience uh, about the higher education system, which is uh, related to my own workplace, in my opinion, CI University also must be proud for all lecturers. They will try to provide the best for students. And I think it is a good opportunity to me to apologize for all my colleagues in this course. Uh, they requested to me to be a membership for uh, working on the uh, project. Uh, I apologize for him that I cannot do that at the end. I hope all of you be success, all of time be happy and happy. Thank you very much, Adi. Okay, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I just did my job, you know, to the best of my ability. And I expect everyone to do the same thing in this course. You know, we are not many people. Uh, many people, this course is actually uh, being taken by 26 people, but only 13 or 14 turn up every week. It's up to people's, their interest. If they want to come, they come. If they don't want to come, I don't put gun into people's heads to attend to my course. Uh, if they're not going to show any interest, actually, I prefer not to attend rather than, you know, come here and disturb other people or disturb me. I would prefer them not to come. And that's absolutely okay to me. You know, university is an environment that we should share our experiences, knowledge, and so forth. You know, many of these things, you can read them from a book, for example, but you will never ever get my perspective or uh, perspective from someone who already has an experience with this kind of work you know i'm not only sharing the knowledge here with you but i'm also sharing my experiences my mistakes that i made in life so you learn from these mistakes and you don't perhaps make the same mistakes in your own career that is the entire point of university education because now we live in the internet age you can basically learn java from online courses, you can learn Python, you can learn whatever uh, out there by yourself if, if you are really a motivational person, but you will never have the experience uh, from a person who already, you know, worked with that technology and they can advise you, you know, don't do this, do it this way, it's better. You know, that kind of advice is what, what it counts to be a lecturer, I think, and that's what I did in this course as much as possible. I did not use BB because it didn't work for me. So I'm not like, you know, if something is not working for me, I'm gonna find another solution. Uh, I think it's wrong to compare one lecture with other lectures because everyone is different. Uh, it's not very professional of me to comment on, you know, other lectures. I, what I can tell you for sure that I did my best. 
and I, I hope it was enough for you, okay? I wish you good luck in your final exam. It was a good experience for me. It was very nice uh, thing for me. I really enjoyed it teaching you. I hope you enjoyed this course as well. Uh, and I wish you success in your future career. This is the end of my course and, and the, at the end of the term as well, okay? Uh, so uh, if you uh, have any problems from now on, uh, we can either meet because I will start going to university starting from tomorrow. I would prefer to discuss uh, any, if any problems you have face to face uh, in my office because I will start to go into university starting from tomorrow. And if that is not possible, uh, we will probably email to each other. Like I said, thank you for coming and attending to the course. I wish you success in your future endeavors. Take care, guys.